Hey guys, it's me again. I just want to quickly talk about this book. I just finished it. Whenever I finish books, I always mean to do a sort of book review on them, and especially if they have questions at the back. Um, so let me just read this title to you. It's called 800 Grapes. It's a novel by Laura Dave, um, which is also the author of The First Husband, if you've read that book. The back of this says... There are secrets you share and secrets you hide. Growing up on her family's Sonoma Country Vineyard, Georgia Ford learned some important secrets. The secret number of grapes it takes to make a bottle of wine, 800. The secret ingredient in her mother's lasagna, chocolate. The secret behind ending a fight, hold hands. But just a week before her wedding, 30-year-old Georgia discovers her beloved fiancé has been keeping a secret so explosive it will change their lives forever. Georgia does what she's always done. She returns to her family's vineyard, expecting the comfort of her long-married parents and her brothers and everything familiar, but it turns out her fiancé is not the only one who's been keeping secrets. Set against the lush backdrop of Sonoma County's wine country, 800 Grapes is a heartbreaking, funny, and deeply evocative novel about love, marriage, family wine, and the treacherous terrain in which they all intersect from a best-selling author who positively shines with wisdom and intelligence. Jonathan Trooper, this is where I leave you. It was talked about in Elle magazine. Um, it got a lot of praise from a lot of different places. Glamour, bustle, pure wow. This is definitely the type of book that you read while you drink a glass of wine and it's kind of just like you know an end of the night chillax highly would recommend this book the chapters are really short so if you don't have a lot of time to read and you have a busy life like i do um some of these chapters are a page long four pages long you definitely have time and the chapters aren't boring there is a lot that kind of happens throughout the course of this book i love the way that it ends it's not predictable, which I also love. I am going to answer some of these questions. How, um, how does forgiveness play into the story? Could you forgive Ben for hiding Maddie? Could you forgive Finn for kissing Margaret? Okay, so Ben is the main character's soon-to-be husband. They're engaged. They're getting married in a week. She finds out that he has a kid named Maddie who he had with ex-girlfriend before she was even in the picture type of thing. And she kind of finds out while she's trying her wedding dress on. And she's in her wedding dress and she sees her fiancé walking on the street with a beautiful um, famous actress, British famous actress, and a little girl calls him dad. I don't know. I don't think that people really know how they're going to react until they go through something. You can always say, oh, if this happened to me, I would definitely act this way, but you don't know until you're in that moment. As for Finn kissing Margaret, um, the main character's brother is Finn, and Bobby... Is it Bobby? I'm pretty sure it's Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. <clears throat> so Bobby and Finn are the main character's two brothers. Bobby is married to Margaret, and the other brother kissed his wife. So, brother-in-law kisses brother's wife. That's kind of messed up, like a Maury, Jerry Springer situation. Ultimately, family comes first. Now, you don't always have to be around family if they're not good for you, if they're verbally abusive, psychologically abusive. You can cut them out and all the power to you in the world for doing so. I feel that I'm a very forgiving person. I get very hurt when somebody disappoints me, but I don't know. I'm all about forgiveness. So that's a little bit about that book. Highly, highly recommend. In fact... I, I always say that I, you know, don't really like reading books over again until I've completely forgotten the plot. I won't be able to completely forget the plot, but I enjoyed the way that this was written so much that I will pick this book up again, you know, a year, two years. I'm going to keep this in my bookcase and pass this along to friends and family. And a big shout out to my godmother and cousin Lisa for giving me that book for Christmas. I absolutely love it. The book that I am kind of reading right now, I'm about a third of the way through. I don't know what fraction that is, but that's how far in the book I am. It is called 
the night circus and the cover looks like this if you see this on a shelf pick it up it's it's pretty dang good I kind of like when you open up the cover um, the way that this is out it's supposed to be like the night circus right here and uh, Newsday L the Denver Post Time Out New York the Economist and Rachel Syme they all said thrilling, transporting, instantly intoxicating, exquisite, original, and surprising, nothing short of a wild ride, enchantingly perfect. Um, and that's kind of how the diction in this book goes. Very eloquent words, eloquent way of writing. I absolutely love this. Uh, this is by Erin Morgenstern. The back of this says... Magical, enchanting, spellbinding, mesmerizing. The circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there. When yesterday, it was not. Within the black and white striped canvas tents is an utterly unique experience full of breathtaking amazements. It is called Le Cirque de Rêve, which means the Circus of Dreams. Le Cirque de Rêve. Le Cirque de Rêve is only open at night. But behind the scenes, a fierce competition is underway, a duel between two young magicians, Celia and Marco, who have been trained since childhood expressively for this purpose by their mercurial instructors. Unbeknownst to them, this is a game in which only one can be left standing. Amidst the high stakes, Celia and Marco soon tumble headfirst into love, setting off a domino effect of dangerous consequences and leaving the lives of everyone from the performers to the patrons hanging in the balance. The Washington Post said it was a love story for adults that feels luxuriously romantic. So they have yet to fall in love um, in this book. So I'm excited for that. I'm kind of in the point where like they're training um, for this like magician showdown basically. One is brought up a certain way, very, very by the book, very, very strict, and then the other one is brought up a completely different way um, in the magical world. I'm very anxious to finish this. If you would like to see a book review on this, please thumbs up this video and let me know down below. After I finish that, I want to finish this. This is a book called Wicked. It was a New York Times bestseller and it's by Gregory Maguire. This is a first edition copy from 1995 and one of my most prized possessions in my book collection. If you have ever heard of the Wicked Witch of the West, this is all about her and you know, if how you're brought up changes who you are and turns you into somebody um, instead of if you'd been brought up, you know, another way. So those are all of the books that I just finished, started reading, and am planning to read. If you kind of liked these little short book reviews um, telling you about books that I really love, I think that I have a very good eye for literature. Anyways, um, if you are not subscribed to me, please subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that subscribe click. If you would like to see some yoga vlogs, I have been going a lot, um, so yes, I can get a camera, bring you along, probably going to get a new phone. I also did this thing called Whole30, um, so if you're noticing that I'm looking a little bit more thin, that is why. I apparently have lost some weight. Everyone keeps letting me know. But thank you, as always, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.